So um, I'd like to welcome you all. Um, I am Zoe from Open Site Hampshire. Um, we are a site loss charity based in Hampshire that uh, provides support and services for visually impaired and blind children, young people and adults all across Hampshire. Um, so you can contact us for, for anything from tech to clubs to equipment to low visual aid ass assessments. Uh, we do home visits as well. Um, so today is our 12th baking session um, and we will be baking canapes and hummus. Um, so you're welcome to bake along with us or sit back and listen to Penny's uh, methods and techniques as a blind baker. Um, we have also um, got great news that Penny has launched her Christmas booklet, uh, which um, has, has the recipes from our baking sessions that we've been doing since February. Um, so the baking, uh, sorry, the Christmas booklet is available on Penny's website and it's also available on Open Sites Hampshire's website as well. So if you would like a copy in different formats, either uh, Word formats um, or other formats, get in touch with either Penny or OpenSight and we'd be happy to help. <laughs> so without further ado, let's stop with my waffle and let's go over to Penny who's going to start today's baking session. Good morning, Penny. Good morning, Zoe. Good morning, everyone else. Now, at the request of Hillary, she wanted us to do canapes. And I have to say that in my mind, oh, canapes... I have no idea what that was, <laughs> but hello, whoever you are. <clears throat> canapes can be incredibly boring because they're very fiddly and time consuming. So what I wanted to do today <clears throat> is talk about some principles of canapes and how you can make them as easy as possible. And especially when you can't see, doing all these fiddly little things is super difficult. So do you remember we made pork pies ages ago? Well, in the oven at this very moment, I have some miniature cocktail pork pies, which were exactly the same as the ones we made before, but are just much smaller. So you can serve them by themselves. Um, but I'll get those out and you can see them in a minute. Um, we also made pastry earlier in the session and I've been using those this morning. Can you hear? That's not the pastry. Those are the little <laughs> tin containers that I've made two little pastry boats in. And I tell you, they were quite difficult to get out, but I have made them. And what I would suggest that you do, if you're making pastry, if you've got scraps left over, think about using those for canapes later on. You just throw them in the freezer, and that's exactly what I did. I ripped out some pastry from the freezer, just some scraps, pressed it out, put it in the bottom of these little metal containers, and cooked them. And now I have two little pastry boats. And if I tap those, let me tap those. You can see, can you hear that? No, you can't. No. They're, they are not as crackly as the tin containers. Because the basic with canapes is probably three things. One, you want a carrier, something to contain it in. Two, you want something, if we're making savoury canapes, that's really bright with flavour and texture. And then you want the frou-frou bits on the top, which might be something that, again, adds to the flavour, gives you some juxtaposition of flavour. So what we're going to do today is um, I've been showing you these little pastry boats. Um, I would commend, if you're going to do small bits of pastry, um, you do them in silicon moulds. Try and find a very small silicon mould, you know, a, a, a tray of them. And I did them exactly as we did before. I pricked the bottoms, 
I pressed um, foil into them, threw them in the oven, cooked them for about 10 minutes, took the foil off, cooked them a little bit more. And you can obviously, you can brush them with beaten egg. So you've got waterproof bottoms. When they come out after another two minutes, brush them again with beaten egg as they cool. And that will give them a double coat of waterproofing. And then you've got little um, uh, boats, carriers that you could put anything in. And perhaps later on, we'll have a chat about what sort of things you could put into your canapes. But I've got, I've got a whole range of ideas and you all have more too. But one of the things I wanted to do today is hummus. Because... Hello, Jacqueline. I was con conscious, but you can often do lots of canapes with bread, with pastry. And actually, sometimes you want to give a variety of textures to people. So I'm going to make hummus. So I'm going to serve it in the carriers I've got. Let me just find them. I have some really dinky little, um, what are these, ramekins. They're only about oh, three fingers wide. So they're quite small. Um, so you can hand one of those to a guest and we'll talk about what goes into it in a minute. Um, but that's a really handy size. Um, and also if you're blind, um, having something that's a bit of a dip um, that you're trying to negotiate out of a shared bowl with a biscuit or something is incredibly tricky. So having your own little bowl is much easier and it means you get less on the carpet, which I always think is really useful. So let's go on to a hummus. And this is incredibly simple. I've got my food processor here and it's locked in. I've got about two cloves of garlic peeled, lob those in. This is one of these really complicated recipes. Okay, there is the juice of a lemon. That's gone in. That was the draining bit. And here I have a tin of chickpeas. Now it says a 400 gram milliliter, something like that tin. For me, it's about the size that baked bean tins used to come in or the you know, tins of tomato. So I'm taking the top off and it's one of those handy ring pull ones. Um, and what I'm going to do is simply drain this out into the bowl. So I have, I'm putting my, literally I'm putting my hand over the top of the tin, draining out the liquid. And actually it's really good to have the liquid um, later on to make this a little bit less dense. So you might need that. And other people make um, meringues with chickpea water. I confess I haven't tried it yet. So in this food processor, I have the lemon, um, the uh, garlic, there go the chickpeas, and then the tahini. Now, if you're not familiar with tahini paste, can I warn you that it tends to separate? And so you need to be really careful. If you open up your container, do not go throwing it around, moving it about too much. I've actually got mine in a bowl because I know that I opened this up this morning and it had really separated. So you get this layer of oil on the top. And if you can't see, that's really difficult to negotiate. So I was giving it a jolly good stir together this morning before started and now I can feel it at the bottom and I'm going to take out I think it said 45 grams well I'm going to do this with there's a big spoonful in and I'm probably going to put another spoonful in and I'm not going to get too precious about the flavour yet because I can, in fact, I'm going to put a third one in because it just feels right. 
Okay, I'm putting the spoon back in there. Put that away in its bowl. For heaven's sake, be careful with tahini. You can spill it everywhere. I mean, if you can't see, you won't even know that you've spilt it. And it's a real hazard for you. So excuse me for a moment. I'm just going to give this a blitz. Right, I'm just going to have a look in here. And I'm going to get a teaspoon. You're all very quiet out there. <laughs> I was, I was going to ask actually, is anyone else baking along with Penny this morning? No, no. I'm not. No. 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 We're going to try it later, I reckon. Yes. <laughs> uh, hi, this is Sophia. I'm not making the hummus, but I will make the pumpkin seeds, and I'm also going to do some roasted nuts. Yes, roasted nuts would uh, be lovely. The only thing, Penny, I was going to ask you, yes. I don't want the pumpkin seeds with the soy sauce, so any suggestions would be welcome for an alternative flavour. Okay, I'm going to think about that. My darling, would you please check the little pies for me? Yeah. Could you put a, a thermometer into the... Right, I'm just going to put a slug of oil into this. Can you see how I measure things by what I feel like at the time? <laughs> and I'm going to put in some of that water. Right, this um, hummus is tasting excellent. <laughs> it's just, I'm just going to try and find some pepper, which I had here. Boom, 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 boom. There was a spare clove of garlic there. Alan, can you help me? I had I yes. had the pepper here. Oh, got it. No, no, thank you. Now you could also. Um, Sorry about that. I'm back. Hello. So in here, just as a little recap, we've got garlic, lemon juice, chickpeas, oil, um, a little bit of the water from the chickpeas. Um, yeah. I've now put in some pepper and the tahini paste. So right. I'm just going to find my lid. Give it one more whiz. Mm -hmm. And you may find, why is she doing this? Can I, may I pass you that? Oh, he's not there. Um, but I think by this time, when it's nearly Christmas, you do not need things that are super complicated. Mm -hmm. um, and also you want things that other people are going to enjoy and uh, th th they've had enough fat they've got pastry coming out of their ears so that's why i wanted something completely different so i'm putting this mix into these tiny little ramekins and what i would serve this with is i have my frou-frou bits that go with it so here i have a little box that i prepared earlier so i have um, some tiny pieces, little sticks of celery. I can put some of those in. So again, we're giving texture and variety. I have the tiniest little carrot that has come out of the garden just this morning. <laughs> and it, it, it is about, ooh, an inch long. It's teeny wee, and there's mm -hmm. another little piece of carrot. I've just come out of the garden and then I have some little pieces of lemon zest to sprinkle over the top. And that gives you a little tiny canapé to give to people. It's not pastry, so it's quite different from everything else. It's got colour. You could add different fruit or vegetables in there. So you could have little pieces of pepper. You could have little pieces of broccoli stalk, just whatever you like, just that people can, you know, nibble down mm. their um, hummus with it. It means that you can dish it out and people aren't all diving into the same dish, which at the moment with COVID, we don't really mm. want. Mm. So 
There you go. Thomas, what do you mm-hmm. think? Fantastic. I didn't realise yeah. it was going to be so easy. Wonderful. Dead easy. You buy mm-hmm. it in the um, supermarkets mm-hmm. um, and, and it just costs you a fortune mm-hmm. um, and you can make it at home. The only thing mm-hmm. you have to watch is that tahini paste. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. I promise you, when you can't see, it's really tricky. Right. Yeah. What I'm going to do now is just slightly clear up. And I am going to put the lid onto that tahini because I'm really cautious about it. Penny, when you get the lemon zest, do you just grate it on the the chunkier grater or do you use one of those lemon zester tools? Um, Today, I actually took a peeler to it. Okay. So I had larger pieces and then I Mm. boringly sliced them Mm. because Mm. that way I had a bit more texture to them. Mm. Um, but I would, I, I cannot live without my lemon zester. Yeah, I use it as well. I use one of those all the time. So I would have done that today, but by having these little pieces of of the zest, which are then cut, you, they actually have texture rather yeah. than zest can come out a bit like cotton wool. And I wanted yeah. that to add to this. Yeah. I'm a bit of a wimp with the zester. I always hand it over to Jeff to do it. Is there a special technique? Because I'm a bit wary yeah, of getting the the, um, hands. the pith. <clears throat> no. How, how no, do you make sure you've got you've got to you? That. Anybody who's mm. so boring that they're going to inspect your zest for pith, <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> just don't bother to invite them again. Mm. <laughs> Their <laughs> life is too short. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, really. it just tastes a bit bitter. Oh, you're not going to take off that much, are you? No, I guess not. No. I'll, I'll be brave. I'll have a go. <laughs> yes. I, I tell you what, you do need strong hands for it. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yes. I find I, I, that my I only hands like are really one lemon at a time. It's too much otherwise. Yeah. Right. How I'm does gonna... the hummus keep once it's made? Oh, I, I think you'll probably... Think it's going to keep in the fridge probably a week. Ooh. I think will you it, know, covered. Will it separate? Mm. Well, if it does, just stir it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it will. Mm. But can you see how quick and easy it is? Mm. Mm. And all you've really got to do is, you know, exactly what I did today. I got everything ready, laid it all out. And I just sat down for a while and prepped my vegetables, the crudités to go with it. Um, and that was the biggest bit of work. It, it really is very simple. But I commend to you doing it in these little individual dishes or something. You know, if, if you get pate and things or whatever you've got so that you could just dish it out to people. Um, one of the things you want to watch is keep an eye on the texture. You do not want it too sloppy because otherwise it's gonna drip off people, Mm. off you, down your front, you know, and you and I wouldn't know that that was happening on Mm. the carpet. But also you don't want it too stiff because that's really miserable. And it's like eating sort of cold porridge. And of course you can change your flavors. So you could, um, as I said in the recipe, you could add chopped mint to this. You could top it with chopped mint. You could use parsley. I don't have either of those at the moment, so that's why I was using the lemon zest. Um, Whatever you've got, and you make this to your own taste. So you might add more garlic, more salt and pepper, more oil, more tahini, something that, you know, it's going to please you. So just get all your ingredients out and then add them until you've got the consistency and the flavour that you want. And you've all been cooking long enough now that you can do that and judge what is right for you. And I'm going to cook the pepitas over on the cooker. And you're going to need to hear what's happening. So in my pan, I have no oil, just a couple of handfuls of pumpkin seeds. And that's now on the heat, and I can't see it either, so I've just come back to chat to you. 
<laughs> I'm literally going to listen to that and wait until I hear them popping. Right. You know how you hear about popcorn popping? Mm -hmm. These will do exactly the same. Oh, wow. Right. So, and you could do it with sunflower seeds, all sorts of things. And really what you're looking at is, is the water and the cotyledons, which is the fat bit inside the skins, just getting heating up and expanding and popping out the skins. Mm. And that as you do that, the skin of the pumpkin seed or whatever um, is just going to crisp up in the heat. So it's really simple. So, um, you know, we talked about the sesame, um, the tahini. I'm sure you all know that tahini is really just sesame seeds pulped until they become oil. Right. Um, but you can also toast sesame seeds and, they, you, you, and so they're lovely as well. So you remember that little hummus we made? You know, if you were a really sad person, you could sit there with fresh sesame seeds, toast them, and then sprinkle them on top of your hummus. Nice. <laughs> nice crunchiness. Mm. Um, right, we were thinking about different flavours with the um, pumpkin seeds. And I'm going to do it with uh, sesame, uh, not sorry, soy sauce. And the uh, re reason I'm using soy sauce is because it's nice and salty and it gives um, a, a different type of flavor. Um, I prefer these to things like, um, you know, salted peanuts. They're so boring. Everybody does these. Mm. Um, what else could we use? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think. Who else has got any favorite things? Uh, oh, can you hear it? Mm, yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> this is me, you know, the careful cook standing here mm -hmm. chatting to you. <laughs> the yeah. choice of being blind, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know what's going on behind you. That's that. Uh, it's really Hi, Penny. Hi, Penny. It's Susie. Hello, uh, Susie. I'm in my classroom today in the lesson and they're watching you. Oh, hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Do you want Excellent. to give them a wave? Hi, oh, good morning. Oh, no, I didn't believe that I would actually talk. But I was just thinking about wasabi. You know? Yes. Because it's people eat yes. wasabi peas and they sell them in a few shops nowadays, don't they? Yes, they do. But wasabi would be nice. I think, you know, we have lots of um, you know, tomato chili jam and things like oh, that. Okay. Um, but what you would do is pop it in here and you're just going to very, not too much, and you're just going to caramelize it very gently. So you can hear those going, can't you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, Susie, have you got the cookbook for all your school, your class? No, but I'll download it and give it to them. Yes, it's, it's all the recipes we've done. Yes. And it's got the links to all the videos and some other ones that I've done before. And um, Penny, I'm going to make the shortbread on Wednesday for my friends and my family. Yes. Nice. Oh, we, we, shall I tell you how well it freezes? Oh, One of the okay. variations was a millionaire or millionaires shortbread. And we made those and froze them. And we've been eating them every few weeks. And they are just wonderful. And you just have to take them out of the freezer long enough for the chocolate to soften. Otherwise, you're licking everything off the chocolate. It was dead delicious. <laughs> right. I am going to Excellent. take... Thank you. Right. Here goes the soy sauce going in. I'm just going to find the pan. Can you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear that boiling off? And what I'm, I've turned the heat down. And what I'm really wanting is that soy sauce to evaporate. And I'm just listening to it. I might just put that bit of heat back on. And I'm just letting them dry off a bit. I 
And I don't suppose I used a tablespoon would be generous for what I've got here, okay? So can you see when I was talking about other flavors, you need something that's quite punchy, not too much. You could try Worcestershire sauce. Um, yeah, I was gonna mention that. Okay, I'm gonna take those off. I've got a plate here. I've got those two little barquettes that I made earlier with pastry. And I'm going to bring these over. Now, how quick was that, eh? Brilliant. Penny, when they pop, do they bounce out of the pan? Do you I've no to... idea. <laughs> <laughs> You haven't found any yet. Yeah. <laughs> That's what husbands do, isn't it? <laughs> well, bounce out the pan. Yeah. <laughs> <Clear out> the <laughs> so, now these are still hot and they're tending to stick together. So I've got them on the plate and I'm just breaking them up with my asbestos tipped fingers. <laughs> You'll notice that I've got a plastic glove on my other hand because I managed to cut myself. I was making flower arrangements for Christmas presents and managed to chop myself with the secateurs. Oh, wow. So these are breaking up. Um, and all, all it's doing is just separating the um, pumpkin seeds where the um, soy sauce has stuck them together. And that's all I'm trying to do. So up here, I, let me just find it. Do, 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 do. Right, I've got a separate little tiny ramekin. So there is a little ramekin full of the pumpkin seeds. I'm going to put them all in there. Now, you, you're probably thinking, oh, gosh, he hasn't done very many. And I haven't done very many. If you wanted to do more, um, you need a very big pan. And you need to do them probably in batches. Don't overwhelm yourself. Try to cope with too many, because otherwise you'll find that they're burning at the edges. Um, and you're not in control of them. Better to do them in batches. OK, so you might toast them all in the dry pan. As they go poppy poppy, you're taking them out and putting them into something else. When you've got them all popped, throw them back into the pan with your soy sauce and mix it up. But here on this plate, I've now got my little bowl of um, hummus with its little carrots and um, celery sticks. I've got my little container of um, uh, popped uh, pumpkin seeds in sesame. I have somewhere here. This is what it's, I have here an empty pastry barquette, which we will discuss in a minute. And I'm just going over here. I'm grabbing a little cocktail, <coughs> cocktail sausage roll. Oh, yummy. So what I'm trying to say is, there we are. You've got a very simple selection. Well, I've got pumpkin seeds all over the counter. Isn't that lovely? Isn't it just what you do when you can't see? Spread things everywhere. <laughs> caring is caring. Can you see that that is a nice little selection? What else do you think you could put in your pastry containers? Gosh. Sorry? I said, gosh, I'm trying to think. <laughs> Uh, probably some halloumi cheese with some sort of paste uh, with the halloumi cheese on the top. Absolutely, absolutely. I Because I don't eat cheese, I never think of cheese, but it's a huge amount of different things you can do with cheese. Mm. Maybe some harissa paste mixed yep. with something else, the canapé and uh, halloumi yes. cheese cube on top. Yes. Like a Middle Eastern twist on it. That would be delicious, wouldn't it? Mm. 
Any other inspirations? How about, does anybody make ratatouille? No. Yes. Yes, occasionally. So perhaps I've stewed up, not too wet, um, some peppers, courgettes, cut really small, onions, garlic, things like that. Um, and then I can put that into one of these little pastry boats. But I will need to have made sure I've waterproofed the bottom with the beaten egg. Um, you could think next time I make something, perhaps I'll freeze a box of that for canapes. Just as you're putting aside pastry during the year, you can put aside fillings during the year. Mm. Yeah, you can have a little bit of curry in one of these. Awesome. Oh, How about guacamole, uh, Penny? Guacamole with maybe sun dried tomatoes on top or uh, olives on top? Absolutely. So, again, for me, uh, you know, I can't emphasize enough how useful it is to have things in a little bowl that I can have and I'm in control of. But a little dish of guacamole with, again, some vegetable garnish, something that gives it a bit of color for people who can see, and we don't care about it, but mm. also gives it a different texture. So that's always what you're thinking about, the carrier, a good strong flavor, and then the frou-frou bits that bring up the, the flavor and add some texture to it. So I can't think of what else I could say to you. What else <laughs> would you do for canapes? I've never made them. I, I have to be very keen to make them. Mm. Yeah. I don't blame Susie. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I've done, Penny, is um, use a slice of cucumber as the carrier, quite a chunky slice, and then I've yes. mixed together some smoked, um, uh, oh gosh, what is it? Uh, smoked crab. No, uh, no, oh, crab, a tin of crab meat yes. with a little bit of mayo and some sweet chilli sauce. Yes. Oh, Just mix that, that nice. and yes. put that on top of the cucumber slice. It's quite nice not having the pastry and... I agree. Yeah. That's why I wanted to do the hummus. I think yeah. if I was going to do that, Hilary, mm. I would be cutting the cucumbers in a different direction. So I would cut them into pieces that are about, mm, I don't know, I'm showing you, but I've no idea, perhaps less than two inches long. Right. And I'd cut them down the middle and then scoop out all the, the pulpy bit, you know, yeah. where, the seeds are, and yeah. then I'd fill that because okay. it's certainly yeah. boat like, yes, and, and and it reduces the amount of liquid you've got there, yeah, and the spill, <laughs> yeah. I mean, mm. I, I think when you don't see, you're really conscious mm. about spills. You know, mm. I go to places and they say, Well, have some dip, and I'm thinking, No way, mm. no way am I going to try that. Mm. You know, pr pr I've probably dressed, you know, in my best outfit, yeah. You know, and I do not want to have their dip down my front for the rest of the evening, mm -hmm. not even know it's there. So mm -hmm. I think we all need to think about things that, are, that keep us as clean as possible. Yeah. Our, mm -hmm. And our furniture and our carpets clean. <laughs> I'm sorry to be so boring about it. <laughs> but I'm like that when, when we go out for a meal on the yeah, pre-COVID. Yeah. Um, I would always choose something that I knew would be drippy or you know, yes. something that's easy that isn't going to yeah. stress me, like you say, you know, and, yeah. and then I'd come around for the rest of the evening wearing it so everyone knows what I had. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but I tend to eat just with a fork because actually managing things with a knife mm. that I have to cut up. So often I'll get the chef, you know, this is that sort of restaurant, yes. to mm. cut it up for me. Um, but also I always avoid lettuce leaves. Yeah. Because you yes. get a lettuce leaf on the end of a fork, gently <laughs> dripping with dressing. And you have no idea by the weight how big that lettuce leaf is. No, no, no. But it's slapping around your cheeks. Yeah. And all that dripping, yeah. you know, dressing is dripping off you again. So I, I tend not to have salad. So it's it's amazing how restrictive your food is. Mm. Thinking about what you can cut up if you've yeah. got to do it. We shouldn't food. have to choose on the basis of what's less messy, we should choose what gives us pleasure. I what's agree. enjoyable. And I, agree. I find, like you, cutting the most difficult task. I'm fine with the gooey, liquidy stuff, not too bad. 
mm. provided it's not on a flat plate and, and it's liquid. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, and also, don't you find in some of the fancy restaurants they put things that are not edible with your food? And sometimes yes. that <laughs> tends to go in your mouth as well. <laughs> Can I tell you this story? Um, I, my favourite restaurant in, in Fairham, Laro's, well, and they are excellent, and he's Filipino, and it's wonderful food. But they were doing a special dinner, and they presented us with a starter, and I picked this thing up and bit into it. And it was very long and very thin. So it's obviously just a piece of chive or something like that. It was a chili. It was a oh, very special, no. long, thin oh. chili. Oh. And I could not get my breath back. And in the end, they had to call an ambulance. Oh, my goodness. And so it, there was, in the middle of this posh special dinner for the whole restaurant, two men in, you know, fluorescent surcoats came in, <laughs> manhandled me out, put me into the ambulance, you know, check that I wasn't having a heart attack and dying oh and all the rest gosh. of it. Mm -hmm. I did get a free trip home. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't finish the meal. Oh no. <laughs> so yes, I absolutely things that are not edible mm. or not supposed to be eaten yeah. should not be on the plate for blind people. Um mm. they're not very sensitive, are they? <laughs> no, it's it's difficult. I've got the Christmas lunch coming up um with work soon and I'm like do it in a way because you obviously like with drinks on the table as well. You reach out to get something, you knock everyone's wine over. Done that several yes. times. I you know, don't you find that Zoe when you go to weddings or something, there's about fifty-five different things around your plate. Yeah. Um, yeah. To, to find something with your hands, not being able to see, is mm -hmm. really difficult. I, I, I have no qualms. I, I, I will ask the waiter to take everything away. I'm only going to drink white wine. I don't mm. care about the red wine glass, the champagne mm. flute. Mm. Um, that can come back later. The water glass, complete waste of time as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I don't want to rinse your fingers. Um, and just get them to clear everything away. Mm. Um, and get the chefs to chop things up. Um, and yes. send it back. You know, is this being cut I, up? I, I agree with you. I think I'm going to be more assertive from now on and, and make my needs known rather than yes. trying to be too polite and not yeah. be mm -hmm. conspicuous. I'm going to ask my family to cut up my stuff and ask mm -hmm. the waiters that to yeah. look, this is my disability and I need it a certain mm -hmm. way. I'm going to do that. From now on. I wouldn't ask your family to cut it up. I would ask the waiter, okay. would you mind asking the chef to chop this up? because it makes okay. it much easier for me. Mm. And actually, they're thrilled to do it. Never have a problem. Right. Because lots of them have no contact with customers. Mm. Yeah, they slap things on, mm. they, out they go. Whereas if they've actually got the waiter going in, saying, please, could you do this? Uh, this is a customer with certain needs, blah, blah, blah. Um, suddenly, you're a real person. Yeah, yeah that's and a very good idea. Good yeah. Yeah, because when I go out, my husband always just automatically gets up, comes around, cuts it up for me, and I feel like a child. Yeah. So it probably is a good idea to ask the chef instead. Yeah, I think I'll do that next time. Yes. And, and yes. You, you're educating at least two people. Yes. The waiter and the chef every time yeah. you do it. Yeah. No, I will do. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for that and, idea. And often yeah. I, I will ask the waiter, what is on the plate? Mm. Where is that? Yes. So, and, and, yeah. and would you mind introducing me to the plate? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, could, you know, you could do it in a really disgustingly horrible, obsequious way. Apologies, I have to leave now to go to a lesson, but thanks again. Have a very happy Christmas. All kind regards, Val. Thank you, Val. Well, thank you, Penny, for another fantastic uh, baking session with us it's very inspiring for me because although I, I do like baking you know sometimes you run out of ideas or or mm. you know, wonder how you actually do something um so yeah it's very very inspiring for me to get back in the kitchen and, and experiment as well as you know try these lovely recipes as well yeah yeah <coughs> brilliant thank you yeah, Merry Christmas so happy Christmas to you all. 
Yeah, yeah. and thank to you. you. Very happy Merry Christmas, Christmas everyone. everyone. We will Bye-bye. see you all in the new year. Yeah. 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 Bye-bye. Bye. 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 To find out more about our regular baking sessions, please contact Open Site Hampshire on 02380641244 or email info at opensite.org.uk. You can also register on our Eventbrite page. And please don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms.